Next question is from Dreytella. How do you successfully exit out of overtraining? Will you gain fat if you go about it too abruptly? Should you treat it like a reverse diet, slowly, slowly easing out of it? No, no, question. no. The best way to get out of uh, overtraining is to immediately cease your workouts. It is not a slow reverse out. If you slowly reverse out of overtraining, you're just going to be overtrained for much longer. Yeah. The best thing you could do if you really are in a state of overtrain is to stop. Stop workouts, stop everything. You can do some stretching, some walking, recuperative type stuff, and then let your body <clears throat> recover. Now, as far as gaining body fat, no. In fact, and I know this doesn't sound like it makes sense. because like, oh, you're burning less calories. No, the truth is if you're really overtrained and then you rest. You build uh, muscle. Yeah, you actually yeah. you actually come to, back a little leaner. I actually muscle. I actually think that this is one of the ways that I try and, and teach somebody to figure out if they are. Is like, okay, if you're stuck at this hard plateau. We think that you might be overtraining like crazy. Let's take like a week off, like fully recover so that when you come back, I want your volume of training to be cut in half. Don't change anything else. Let's see what happens. And if you build more muscle and or get leaner, right, you look better, feel better, get stronger uh, over the next two or three weeks of cutting the volume in half, then that's a clear sign that yep. you were overtraining. If you put on a bunch of body fat and you don't gain any more muscle, you don't get stronger, maybe you weren't overtraining, maybe there was something else going on. So this is actually one of the ways I think that you can tell if you're overtraining is by simply reducing the volume, you get in better shape. You get stronger because of it. Every time when I'm overtrained, yeah. I have less muscle and more body fat. When I get out of it, it's exactly what happens. I build muscle and, and I end up getting leaner. In fact, when I would get people who are like really, like I could really see like, oh, this is person's overtrained, they would always be shocked yeah. that doing less would, because they all expect to do less to <clears> feel <throat> better. People are like, okay, I think I need a rest. I need, you know, I'll feel better. But they're always shocked that they get better results all well, of a sudden. Yeah, a lot of times my clients, it, it'll reveal it more effectively to them when they go on like a week-long vacation. They don't actually train. And then they feel so energetic and strong <laughs> and like everything's working so amazingly like the following week. And it's just, that's such a clear indication, you know, that you're just doing too much. Listen, if, if your uh, body has to choose to either survive or build muscle, it's going to try to survive first. Right. That's its yep. number one priority. So, and if you've been beating it up so bad, it's constantly thinking about surviving. It's not thinking about building muscle, simply reducing that volume and intensity and scaling it back or, and, or feeding the body appropriately now gets the body to go like, Oh, we're good. We're not, we're not struggling to live and survive. Now I can prioritize the, building muscle. The hormone profile that's associated with overtraining is a hormone profile that is anti-muscle and pro-fat storage, especially visceral body fat or trunk body fat. Body For fat the survival reasons. Right, so the hormone profile that's associated with appropriate training is pro-muscle and, and pro-fat loss. So what do those two look like? Well, uh, a pro or an anti-muscle pro-fat storage is high cortisol, all day, okay, because you should get a spike in cortisol in the morning, but then it should go down and be low at night. Well, somebody who's under chronic stress or overtraining has got cortisol that's just high all the time. It's insulin insensitivity. So you actually start to lose sensitivity to insulin. It's a reduction in androgen receptor density. These are the receptors that testosterone attaches to. It's lower testosterone. It's a lower growth hormone. So you're, what's happening is your body is literally resisting building more muscle because if you're overtrained and there's too much stress, the last thing your body wants to do is increase its uh, energy demands by building muscle. Because in throughout all of human history, except from relatively recently, you wanted to be efficient with calories. And if you were under a lot of stress, you wanted to become even more efficient with calories. More muscle is not the way to do that. More muscle make, means you burn more calories. So your body is literally organizing itself in a way to make all your goals much harder to accomplish when you're overtrained. So you're going to store more body fat, especially around the midsection. You're going to not build as much muscle. Now, when you come out of that and you do it right and you rest, and the best way to do this is immediate and abrupt. It is not a slow reduction. It is immediate and abrupt. Uh, that's the fastest way to get there. Um, then what will happen is the hormones start to change again over time and your body starts to allow itself to have more energy demands by building more muscle. And it allows itself to burn more body fat 
uh, as a result because it doesn't feel so stressed out like it needs to hold on to everything. So, and I know people, it's, you know, this whole calories in versus calories out, that calories out side of the equation it can change dramatically depending on your lifestyle, but on your hormones and on what your body thinks is, is going to be beneficial for itself. And being overtrained is not a great place to really have a lean, muscular, healthy physique. 